yet another slightly different episode of Defeasible Reasoning. I'm here with your internet friend, Noah DeSmet. How's it going? That was to you guys. I know. I'm, he knows how I'm going. <laughs> and I'm Professor Rosema, your other internet friend. Mm, the host of Defeasible Reasoning, broadcasting to you live from the Epic Studios on the 53rd floor of the Grand Rapids Community College Media Center's building. And wanted to respond to an email Noah shot me the other day. Do you want to hit me with like what the gist of that email yeah, was? Yeah, so well, from what I remember, because I don't have it in front of me, but I think you do. But so I gave it a shot. I have some replies on it or something. One of the many uh, podcasts that I listen to that I like is called Reply All, and it's basically a podcast about the internet. And they have a few different ways that they produce their podcast. One, of course, is just the normal storytelling. Um, they've got this other great one called Yes, Yes, No, where they look at tweets that are super popular that are very hard to understand and they try to deconstruct it for you. But then there's also this one called super tech support where um, they take stories of uh, of folks who contact them and and ask for help, some technical problem that that they can't figure out. And the reply all hosts tackle this this problem and and try to solve it. And this was one of those episodes that I emailed you about. A a girl had had her... um, <clears throat> Lizzie. handle Lizzie. Yeah. Yep. Her name was Lizzie and she had her handle, which was lizard, I believe on Snapchat or was it Instagram? I, I can't remember. Insta I, okay. Yeah, Instagram. Yep. And she had that, um, basically that handle hacked that account hacked and, and taken from her. It seemed really shady, really nefarious. She was really worried and she was trying to figure out what happened, who did this. And it was a really great episode into the exploration of sort of the people behind that, that that takedown all right and then use the phrase that sort of got my hackles up if you would please yeah i think i may have said hacker culture (laughs) there's where yeah so i'm obviously you know my part sometimes on this podcast is to play the the normal person who isn't sort of i don't really fully understand computer security or how or how hacking works i have a very um, you and me both brother <laughs> it's very surface level like <laughs> stuff's hard i think it's interesting obviously like that's why i'm a, a big part of why i'm a part of this podcast but um i don't really super understand it and so it could have been a big no-no for me to say like oh yeah this is hacker culture i i could be totally wrong <laughs> well and and the reason i that like this this uh threw up sort of a, a red flag for me was because I don't think you're wrong from the perspective that like people think exactly what you think right there. Yeah. That what amounted to like eight bros on the internet with a discord channel and a a lack of moral fiber represent hacker culture. Right. And I can't speak for everyone, obviously. So, I mean, this is a diverse group we're talking about us. Most of us who are into coding and who get the term hacker thrown at us probably aren't the kind of bros who are going to hack your SIM card and steal your, basically these guys hack was that they, uh, I think they talked about two. One was, and it was Snapchat, by the way, it's, it's episode one thirty, the Snapchat thief. thief. That's, that's the, yeah. Insta Snapchat. I'm old. It's They're the all same. The same thing. It's the same. <laughs> anyway, sorry. You were saying, Oh, and, uh, And like a lot of us get that term thrown around at us, maybe unfairly. And then I feel like we've, we may have lost the war for the word, Mm, the word hacker. Right. And information security sort of lost the war for the word cyber. Like a lot of us (laughs) are are like cyber. Mm, Really? Yeah. Are you, are you hacking the internets and the cybers right now? (laughs) And it's kind of, kind of upsetting. So first I, a, that is a great episode and one that I will probably be sending my students to on the regular. Um, for example, pro tip kids sending nudes in Snapchat, Insta, whatever. That's probably not the smartest thing you're doing in yeah, this life. For and sure. Yeah. It's secure. You still don't, you still have to trust the person on the other end of that picture explicitly. Yeah. That's a whole use, nother thing. Yeah. To yeah. not use this. So that was a big one. There was a bunch of those in there, um, including the list of um, security must do's if you care at all about, um, getting hacked. So I was in a meeting yesterday with someone who, who told me, and this made me cry a little bit that basically her password was just the same thing incremented every yeah. time the IT department asked her to, to please change your password, mm. which is, which is a totally common thing. 
Um, the other hack that got these guys from, uh, that got these guys into an account. And I want to say this was how one of the, the dudes in the, in the channel had picked up another, they were, they were into like premium names. Their deal was they tried right. to steal, you know, Steve at twitter.com or, or anything that was right. So what they learned, short. yeah, what they learned was basically the reason why Lizzie's lizard handle on Snapchat was, was hacked and, 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 basically taken from her was because there's this whole subculture in hacker culture. <laughs> I know it makes you cringe, but or, or there are I, I don't know how criminals else to describe who it. happen to know yeah. how to use computers. Okay. There's a criminal subculture, maybe not hacker subculture, criminal subculture that what they do is they go after what are called OG handles and OG. Um, you know, if you're a little older, like my, like myself and drew, then you may know that as or, original gangster is that and what it's that means? <laughs> original gangster. These OG handles are handles that are super simple, very original, very cool. That's, that's, it's kind of OG has become this term for just meaning original or or cool. Um, and so lizard is a very original, cool name, hard to get or something like dog or uh, Frank or wh whatever, you know, ghost. These those would be like OG handles that would be very uh, desirable. The way and they th summed it up was a noun with no numbers after it. Yes. Which is like, that's pretty awesome. And in fact, Antichrist for Instagram apparently sold for four grand was one of the examples. That's the crazy thing is that they actually sell these and just make boatloads of money. So that's what they found out. And um, we were going with the, the two hacks that they did. One was SIM card swapping where. Sorry. Where, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so like to describe this is it's not the world's most technically sophisticated hack. You get a SIM card, you call the cell phone company and you say, hey, I'm trying to swap my phone. Can you please help me? And at hacker conferences, this is like a sport to, to see what you can trick the poor tech support person into doing on the other end of the line. I saw an excellent presentation by a woman who would use um, the sounds of babies crying in the background to heighten the sense of urgency so that they would, you know, the tech support person's job is to support you, even if they don't realize that maybe you are not you. Mm. So that's one of the like fundamental problems of information security to figuring out who the hell we are dealing with. Mm. Um, you know, the, the whole user authentication issue is a big problem. So that was one. And then the other one was a pretty simple deal too, where they took a, um, username password list and tried, I think it was credential stuffing every, you know, if, if I get a list of passwords and there's one out on the internet, that's like seven gigabytes of username and password pairs stolen from places, um, that, that had a data breach and bad password retention policies. They did not take care of your data when it was at rest and they did not encrypt that so that hackers couldn't steal it. See, I'm even doing it, Colleen. <laughs> uh, so like I said, maybe we've lost, even with the white hat, gray hat thing. Hmm. So they those password pairs wind up on the internet and now there's this huge list of username, space, password, or tab, password. And um, you take that and you stuff it into every single service on the internet hmm. and the ones that come back and let you log in because like my friend who is using her same password plus the number one then number two that's pretty simple to figure out and you can there is already software out there that will go ahead and do that for you hmm. and so basically you load up the file you give it a list of websites you hit go and all of a sudden burp suites out there throwing usernames and passwords at login dialog boxes everywhere so one of the methods that they used like you said was these um, SIM cards that, how did it work exactly? Like th they would take a SIM card and break into the account and then burn the SIM card. How, what was it exactly? Are, are we trying to do a how to here? Or? <laughs> well, maybe we shouldn't talk too much about it. <laughs> no, but. no, like you can, I think the, the episode does a fine job. Yeah. Of yeah. Listen you. to the but, episode for but, sure. But the, the, but, but the nuts and bolts of it are you call up, you, uh, once the, the account is transferred to that SIM card, that phone becomes your phone right so it does all the things you can do with your phone which is which is you know a primary point of access that's right they had the the, the cell phone company switch the number to that sim card right yeah, and yeah. then i go and because a lot of tools use sms or um, text message to reset your password now i go to lizzie's instagram page i log mm. in i say oops i forgot my password right right will you text me my password reset instructions please because there's no way 
that you could possibly have. And then it shows up on their bogus phone. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then the thing they were doing with the, the kid who's microwaving SIM cards to destroy them, <laughs> yeah. which expensive way to dispose of something, you know, hammers are like $3. <laughs> so that was one method. But the other method, which was what you were talking about, was this um, credential stuffing, c- credential stuffing where it ex- already exposed usernames and passwords that they found. They're just using every possible iteration of those for all of these different or for in this case for specific accounts. So if we knew Lizzie uh, went by L Izzard um, at gmail.com, you could scroll through those types of lists, mm-hmm. find the passwords that L Izzard at wherever had been using in a, an account and use those to log into the sites. And then if you really cared about something like if you were, say, a high ranking official at a community college and somebody really wanted to get into your account, they might start throwing that password from that list mm. at login pages right. and then incrementing the number up because that's a super common thing to do. And that's the software that does this kind of work that will try and log into things has a little checkbox that says increment the number hmm. or look for patterns in if I've got a a Rosama or my old Drew at WXMI account um, shows up on these lists. If there's I am happy with my job one <laughs> and the next one is I am happy with my email one, mm. then you might know that the login to the job is this. And, and then so if you're trying to get into my Facebook, you might go, I am. So like all the little tricks we try to do right. to, to do this is bunk. Microsoft mm. gave up on this decades ago, it seems like. Um, they, they've, they've kind of conceded that by giving people um, the, the forcing them every 90 days to change passwords just leads to crappy passwords that are easy for people to remember Interesting. and huh. super easy for computers to guess. Wow. So you're saying though, those two methods, there's nothing particularly sophisticated about either of those. The, it, the, this is what it um, made me think of. And you may have done this. I'm not saying I committed this crime when I was a kid, but when I was a 17 year old boy, yeah. I was at a high school that had vending machines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I may have seen people take plastic um, see-through tape. Oh, yeah, yeah. And tape the dollar bill and make a big long strip of plastic tape. And then they would feed the dollar bill into the pop machine. The pop machine would read the dollar. You would press a button. Coke would come out. They'd snap the dollar bill back. And then they had free pop for the rest of the semester. Tearing down the evil empire of the Coca-Cola. Someone you saw in your Right, right. (laughs) <laughs> fighting the system. So you're saying it's not a particularly sophisticated way of stealing Coke. You, you're not, you know, Ocean's Eleven it into the vending right. machine. But Very seldom did you ever see anybody rappel down <laughs> from the ceiling, <laughs> right, yeah. stopping inches from the floor sure. and the lasers. And mm-hmm. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like That's like sort of the level we're talking gotcha. about. Somebody's got the playbook for this thing written out. The, the thing that makes you the Coke bandit of Ottawa Hills isn't that you're a super genius hacker. It's that you're willing to rip off a Coke machine. Got it. Yeah. And see, that's what was so disconcerting to me about some of these guys on this podcast is that they were, they were, and maybe it's just because I am older, but man, they <laughs> seemed like they just were like these bros hanging out. Um, and yet they had this power to um, really exploit your entire life. And it was, it was pretty scary. And, and was it eye opening for you? Did it kind of, I don't know if it was, it was eye opening to hear them talk to each other. Cause that you actually, in, in the episode, you know, you get to hear them talking on discord right. to each other, the, just the audio. And I guess you have a certain image of your mind of this, what I see as sophisticated, you know, you're saying it's not sophisticated, but what I see as sophisticated, you have a certain idea in your mind of these people doing this and it was totally not these guys. Um, and it made me think, wow, like if these sort of dudes in their apartment are doing this, the people in who are... In their basement, in fact, right. if you remember right. Yeah, that's right. So what are the actual like pros who've got a good head on their shoulders, who like know exactly what they're doing I, I can't even imagine. Well, I think the distinction that we um, sort of uncharacteristically make is we sometimes call people doing what we're talking about here skids mm. or script kiddies, but they're they're not inventing anything. And to my mind, okay. that's the essence of hacking is to to see a place where other people don't see something and take advantage of it. Just okay. doing a thing you read about on the internet to rip people off for four grand yeah. is just crappy criminalism. Mm. 
that happens to involve a computer. Not not necessarily hacking. Hacking with a capital H. <laughs> right. Okay. And there is um there's a there's a further you know one man's criminals another man's um, freedom fighter. And so like there are places in this world where I think there is a you know there are hacktivists out there who mm -hmm. are who are using the similar kinds of techniques to um, to affect change in the world right. in perhaps a positive <clears throat> way and yeah, in, yeah. and in a negative way. It's just a different space in which these things happen. There's there's this gentleman called Dual Core who is a nerd core rapper. <laughs> yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting one time. Oh, okay, um, and he has the um, OX OA, the which is the hexadecimal four ten hack commandments. And these guys would be advised to to investigate the work of a gentleman named the Gruck, as well as the uh, the Ten Hack Commandments, because the tenth one pretty much sums it up, and it's shut the actual blank up. Because if you if you really care about this sort of thing, if you're if you're trying to affect change, like if you're a Chinese dissident, like you can't go around bragging about what you're doing. Similarly, right. if you're really trying to stay under the radar you're not sitting around in a discord channel bragging about your yeezys yeah like <laughs> these guys were for sure yeah right so that's that's like even from the perspective of the hackers hackers respect like that's just they would not fall under good. the auspices I don't, I don't think anybody's asking these guys to come to defcon next year and explain how they should sure. hack <laughs> yeah. account. but a lot of kids that's a, that's what they're doing and and to my mind what came across was that these are kids like mm -hmm. yeah i don't yeah. know how you misspent your youth but mine was pretty well misspent and i might have gotten involved in things like this as a kid but if but if you saw that with just a little bit of direction just a little bit. The reporter reaches out yeah, yeah, and exactly. says, hey, do yep. you want to talk to the person that you harmed? Mm -hmm. And he was like, he was like, I can after I finish the dishes, <laughs> <laughs> which was awesome. Yeah. So and and had given a chance to um, be talk. confronted with. Yeah. yeah and like under like we're dumb when we're kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I looking back, I understand why the framers of this great constitution of ours said, you know, maybe we shouldn't be allowed to drive the bus until you're 35. Today it seems like maybe there should have been a cap on that too, but but like <laughs> it it like when you're a kid your brain just isn't all the way done cooking. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And and I think that like if we can, especially um, if you know people who are who are into computers and maybe looking a little sketchy, you, you just that little nudge. So if you just get them into a positive environment like a hacker club or a maker space or a place where those energies can be challenged appropriately the the world opens up and you know i don't know if, if freakonomics has done the math on this one but did you ever hear where they their first book had research about dealing drugs and what it pays dealing drugs in un, until you are like the nba until you are at the tippy top dealing drugs is basically paying you worse than working at mcdonald's with the added benefit that you can go to jail or get shot and i feel like these kind of hacks while cute and clever might make you a couple for grand, but probably, the risk reward is yeah, yeah. hugely out of base. And plus, if you can script burp to send a bunch of email addresses and fill forms and that kind of stuff, you know, there is a company somewhere that needs you to be red teaming their network or to be trying to trying to, you know, figure out how to maintain their stuff and, and keep them safe from the real scary hackers like the, you know, nation state guys and the APT crews who are out there who I think most of us deserve the hacker, even though they're up to no good. Um, whereas this stuff, eh. That direction you're talking about for the kids who are maybe are getting into a little bit of trouble with this sort of thing, do you think that little bit of direction could be found at the Grand Rapids Community College Center for Cybersecurity Studies? <laughs> the devil, you say? That's a good point, sir. This podcast is brought, brought to you by... by. <laughs> No, the but do you, mattress. do you encounter maybe like borderline those kind of kids in, in the program? Of course, of yeah. course. And they're generally awesome and smart and just curious. And like those things, you know, you embrace them, you like, um, like a golden gloves, you know, when I was a kid and liked to, to tussle, have it, you know, I'm Irish, a wee Donnybrook as a lad. <laughs> Get into a get into a bit of a fisticuff. The same thing's true of these guys. You know, mm. you put them into a CCDC competition or a red team, blue team kind of hack fest, and they blow up. They just 
blossom. It's awesome. So, I mean, yeah. And, and hopefully we provide that kind of space. It, it, it certainly is one of my goals because again, you saw that kid, you, he said, sorry. And he understood he had done badness. Right. He is, he is not living a hard scrabble life. You know, he like, I grew up on the Southeast side. It's about as hard as Grand Rapids gets. Like I had friends who like dinner was questionable. These guys, he was pushing grocery carts. He was living with mom. Mm -hmm. They had, they were moving from time to time, but you know, it didn't sound like he was coming up that rough, just the right nudge. And right. That guy's on the right path. And furthermore, in the, the, they were French and it sounds like they were sort of a disparate group of pokes. Yeah. The problem, like this is a problem that has uh, similar ramifications in over there on the Southeast side of Grand Rapids for, for different crimes. But the problem in America is that the computer fraud and abuse laws and the DCMA and there, there are horrible penalties if you get caught doing something like that in the States that just outstrip every other civilized nation. Hmm. We come down hard on these people. So uh, don't get caught kids. <laughs> The lesson for today, don't get caught. <laughs> Play it safe out there. <laughs> thank you for letting me ramble on. And, and thank you for inspiring me to think about this. I, I feel the same way about the word cyber as I do about the word hacker. I feel like, man, maybe we just missed it. And it, we need to come up with a different word for what we're doing. Neil deGrasse Tyson has this thing where he says, you know, I don't think that a word necessarily is what the dictionary says it is. It's what the surrounding culture and society infers that it is. And that's that's what a word does mean. Let's end it there. <laughs> okay. That's profound, man. Getting deep on me. The Feasible Reasoning is produced at the Epic Studios of Grand Rapids Community College Media Technologies Department. Epically executive produced by Noah D. Smith and hosted by me, Drew Rosenberg.